Welcome to Tutorial 4. This short tutorial will expand on the example contained in Tutorial 1, Endeavor Corporation A, with emphasis on the presentation of earnings per share, also known as EPS. This tutorial contains two learning objectives. The first is to review the calculation and presentation of basic earnings per share, or EPS. And the second is to review the calculation and presentation of diluted earnings per share, or EPS. This tutorial is based on the Endeavor Corporation example covered in tutorials one through three. It's recommended that you review tutorial one first before proceeding with this one. However, this tutorial can be viewed independently of tutorials one through three. Make sure that you download the related file so that you can follow along because we will be drawing some additional information out of the data. Here is the summary of the presentation of the Statement of Comprehensive Income for Endeavor Corporation as presented in Tutorials 1 through 3. We will be focusing in the calculation and presentation of earnings per share here in this section highlighted yellow. Remember that EPS disclosures are required only under IFRS reporting and not required under ASPE. The remainder of this tutorial will focus only on earnings per share beginning with basic EPS followed by a simple diluted EPS calculation. We're keeping it simple at this stage because diluted EPS is a complex topic and will be covered in your next level course, Financial Accounting 2. Basic EPS is calculated as net income minus preferred dividends and then divided by the weighted average number of common shares. The deduction of preferred dividends will depend if the preferred shares are cumulative or non-cumulative. Again, this is something that's more applicable in your next level course. However, since you are exposed to EPS presentation at this level, it's important that you have a basic understanding of how to calculate it. Proper disclosure of EPS on the income statement includes two columns, one for basic and one for diluted. Please refer to the data and you'll notice that the company has 50,000 convertible $1 preferred shares outstanding. This means that the preferred shareholders are entitled to a $1 dividend per share only when dividends are declared in the year. Cumulative dividends would have a dividend entitlement even if no dividends are declared. And so that's why this question includes a cumulative dividend because we would include it in the calculation of EPS whether or not dividends are declared. We begin with the calculation of basic EPS, starting with the formula in 460,000 income from continuing operations, and then we subtract the preferred dividend entitlement. The reason why we do this is because if we're referring to earnings per common share, what we must do is deduct the preferred dividend that the preferred shareholders are entitled to, and therefore what's left over goes to the common shareholders. So that means in this case, if we start with more formulating 460,000 and pay 50,000 to the preferred shareholders, we'd be left with $4,410,000 that's available to the common shareholders. And then if we divide that by 100,000 common shares, this gives us a basic EPS of $44.10. Refer to the data, you'll see that here is the 50,000 preferred share times $1 per preferred share dividend rate. If the dividends were non-cumulative and no dividends were declared, then the basic earnings per share would be $44.60, as the common shareholders would be entitled to all of the earnings, no preferred dividends would be paid out, and that's why this number would be zero. The next calculation of basic EPS is on the discontinued operations. In this case, the deal resulted in a reduction of EPS because the loss on disposal of the services division exceeded the income generated from the operation of the division until disposal. Recall from the income statement, the loss on discontinued operations net of tax was $1,071,000 and divided by 100,000 common shares gives us a loss per common share of $10.71 on the discontinued operation. Finally, taking the EPS on continuing operations and then subtracting the EPS on discontinued operations, so 44.10 less $10.71 gives us earnings per share on net income of $33.39. This number can be proven by taking that income, 
minus the preferred dividends of 50,000 or 100,000 common shares, and that gives us 33.39. What you'll also notice is that there is no deduction in the discontinued operations calculation of the preferred shares. If you did, then this wouldn't work out correctly. And if you want to make sure you can check by taking the basic minus the discontinued equals the net income. And that should also work as the same calculation here by taking the net income minus the preferred dividends divided by the common shares. So if you included the preferred dividends here, it wouldn't work out properly. Now, the other thing you'll notice as well is that there is no earnings per share on comprehensive income. And that is because EPS is not required to be reported on OCI or total comprehensive income on the income statement. So don't ever worry about calculating earnings per share on comprehensive income. If there were no preferred shares outstanding, or if the preferred shares were non-cumulative in nature and no dividend was declared in the year 2020, then the earnings per share on continuing operations would just be $44.60. And that's because we would have no deduction of preferred dividends from the four million four hundred and sixty thousand income from continuing operations and the same for the eps on net income again we would not be deducting the fifty thousand preferred dividends so we were just left with three million three hundred eighty thousand nine thousand in net income divided by hundred thousand common shares of course the uh, discontinued operations would still have a ten dollar and seventy one cent deduction now we can move on to diluted earnings per share which is calculated in the same order and same way as basic EPS, except we need to ensure that we have adjusted the number of common shares for any potential dilution. In this case, the data provided for this problem indicates that there are 50,000 $1 cumulative preferred shares, which we will assume to be diluted for this illustration. Regardless of whether or not those preferred shares are actually converted, Diluted EPS shows the worst case scenario of the highest amount of dilution relating to any dilutive securities, which could include convertible bonds, convertible preferred shares like in this example, stock options, warrants, or rights. At times, anti-dilution could occur and these wouldn't be included, but diluted EPS is actually much more complex and is covered in greater detail in the next level course, so we'll keep it relatively simple here with this one dilutive component. If the preferred shares were converted into common shares, then the preferred dividends would not be paid and no adjustment is necessary to the basic EPS calculations as no dividends would be paid to the preferred shareholders. But in this case, the diluted EPS on the continuing operations is simply calculated as $4,460,000 income from continuing operations divided by 150,000 common shares which is the original 100,000 plus the 50,000 assumed converted. This results in diluted EPS on continuing operations of $29.73. Next is diluted EPS on discontinued operations, calculated simply as the loss on the DO of $1,071,000 divided by the 150,000 common shares, resulting in a negative EPS of $7.14 on discontinued operations. Finally, we have a diluted EPS on net income, calculated as $29.73 EPS on continuing operations, less the $7.14 loss on discontinued operations, giving us $22.59 diluted EPS on net income. This can also be confirmed by taking the net income of $3,389,000 divided by 150,000 common shares. Please ensure that you're comfortable with the calculations before proceeding. Recall from tutorial one, we included a scenario where the company incurred a loss due to a nuclear meltdown. We'll review the impacts of that loss on the scenario in basic and diluted earnings per shares. Here once again is the presentation of the statement of comprehensive income as presented in tutorial one. None of that has changed and we're gonna be focusing here on the earnings per share. Again, EPS disclosures are required for IFRS only. Now, the only difference in dealing with losses is just the math. In this case, there is a loss 
on continuing operations of $8,540,000. And to calculate the basic EPS, we still deduct the preferred dividend of $50,000 and then divide by our 100,000 common shares, giving us $85.90. If no preferred dividends were declared or paid, then we would be left with an $85.40 loss. And that's because we would not have to deduct this $50,000 in preferred dividends. In our example, however, for Endeavor Corporation, the preferred shares are cumulative. Therefore, it does not matter whether or not the dividends or paid are declared. They are always deducted. Only if preferred shares were non-cumulative would we be concerned about whether the dividends were declared or not. Payment of the dividend in either case would not impact EPS calculations. Then we include the loss per share on discontinued operations, which is exactly the same. This hasn't changed in the previous scenario. In fact, it doesn't change at all, regardless of whether there is income or loss on the continuing operations. This is just a repeated calculation, 1,071,000 on the DO divided by the 100,000 common shares, and that's our $10.71. And finally, we calculate the EPS on the net loss. In this scenario, by taking the 9,611,000 net loss, again subtracting the preferred dividends, divided by 100,000 common shares, gives us 96.61. And we can double check that by taking 84.90 less $10.71 on the DO, and that would also give us 95.61. Once again, notice that there is no deduction of the preferred dividends in the calculation of the discontinued operations portion of the basic EPS. If the preferred dividends did not exist, then we would have a loss of 85.40 and a net loss of 96.11, which corresponds to the loss on continuing operations and the net loss from the income statement. And now we can calculate the diluted earnings per share in a loss situation. Again, we take the loss on operations of 8,540,000 and divide it by the 150,000 common shares, which was the original 100,000 common shares plus the additional 50,000 in converted preferred shares. And this gives us a loss from operations of $56.93 diluted earnings per share. As before, the discontinued operations calculation is the same. Nothing has changed except for the number of common shares. So 1,071,000 divided by 150,000 common shares is $7.14. Finally, we have diluted EPS on the net loss calculated as $56.93 diluted loss from continuing operations less the discontinued operations of 714, or actually we add those together because they were both losses. And this gives us a total net loss of $64.07 per diluted share. And again, this is calculated by taking the entire net loss, dividing by the 150,000 common shares, and the number works out to be the same. So you should be able to check both ways. Now, please ensure that you're comfortable with the calculations before proceeding to the next tutorial. Let's now just quickly review some important points to remember. First, earnings per share disclosures are required only for IFRS. Second, always report basic and diluted earnings per share on continuing operations first. Then always report basic and diluted earnings per share on discontinued operations second, only if they're applicable, of course. Fourth, EPS on continuing operations plus the EPS on discontinued operations equals EPS on net income. Remember to never report EPS on other comprehensive income. That's not a requirement. And finally, advanced diluted EPS generally requires much more complex computations and is beyond the scope of this course. So don't get too concerned about diluted EPS. So this concludes tutorial four. We hope you found it helpful.